clock on the computer says 631, so I'm going to go and call us to order and open us up in prayer. So, Dear Holy Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for the opportunity to gather, and thank you for the opportunity to do planning commission business, and and just ask that you be with us and guide us tonight and just guide the decisions we make and just be with our community. We pray for our leaders from national level all the way down to the local level. And we ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Lauren, will you call the roll, please? Altizer? Here. Coker? Here. Evans? Here. Hardwick is absent. Hasty? Here. Longmire? Here. Martin? Here. Slattery? Here. And Silkwood? All right, that's eight. Thank you. That is eight. We have eight of nine, so we certainly have a quorum. Um, first up on the agenda is the acceptance of agenda. Has everybody got an opportunity to look over that? Um, I assume that anybody has any. If you have any suggestions or corrections, please speak now. Hearing none, I'm going to entertain a motion to accept the agenda as presented. I uh, heard Miss Silkwood or Commissioner Silkwood first, so that's what we're going to go with. That's second. And, second. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure who did that one. So, well, so um, But with that, I'll go to a voice vote. And all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. We'll now go into approval of the minutes from our prior meeting. Um, Lauren, can you refresh my memory if there was anybody absent that needs to abstain from that? Uh, Ms. Commissioner Slattery, was. thank you for the reminder on that. Um, with that, I'm going to entertain a motion. Move to, to approve. We've got a motion. Can I get a second on that, please? We have a motion and a second. Lauren, will you call the roll on this one, please? Altizer? Yes. Evans? Hasty? Yes. Longmire? Yes. Martin? Yes. Slattery? Silkwood? And Coker? Yes. All right, that's seven. All right. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. I'm going, we've got, looks like we've got one item on there now. I know there's talk about maybe doing some more, um, but there's one item on there. Um, Timothy, I'm just going to let you just very briefly share with us what we've got going on there, please. Um, which is going to be kind of behind uh the Culver's in the, where Firehouse Subs is, and also behind Hampton Inn. Um, it's, uh, it'll be, a, of course, a financial institution, and it's um, the, the layout and the, 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 um, the site that they've selected is in accordance with the approved uh, FTP, which you can see on the screen in front of you. And um, their building is there. They've done quite a bit of work to... Um, Kind of upgrade their prototype and bring it into conformance with our with our standards it's all all brick and uh, limestone panels so all the materials comply and they have agreed to off tech on it thank you timothy since this is on consent agenda there's we're not going to open up discussion because we had the opportunity to pull that off there um, but with that i'm going to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented Right. Commissioner Hasty with the motion. Second. And Second. Got three seconds. Um, I think I believe I heard Commissioner Silkwood first on that. Um, Lauren, will you call the roll on this, please? Altizer? Yes. Evans? Yes. Hasty? Yes. Longmire? Yes. Martin? Yes. Slattery? Yes. Silkwood? And Coker? Yes. That's all eight. All right. Thank you. Next up, we have. Um, item six, final plat for Fountain Brook. Um, have the comment on the agenda that there's some disagreement with planning comment one. So is there a representative from the developer here on that? Would you come up to the podium and we'll get to you in a minute. I just want you to be ready on that if you don't mind. And Grant, I believe you had the lead on this one. So you kind of kick us off and tell us what we got going on here, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is section three of Fountain Brook. Uh, this is part of an approved development plan. Um, two two has already been approved and just recorded. Uh, this section, we've had some some uh, things about this that we looked at, and uh, when this was resubmitted, they'd uh, <clears throat> we'd had a previous conversation some years back about um, the road extension. They have some great issues of uh, with with Norman Way, and uh, they they kind of brought it back up here at the the end, and we we'd had construction plans already approved that showed that that road extension we'd already had that conversation um and and it's it's difficult i think with with the way the baird farm 
we'll connect in with Norman Way here and uh, with the grades and everything. So it's going to be, be costly to, to take that roadway to the property line. Um, however, they we've talked to them about that, and, and with that being... If they don't do it, the city's going to have to do it. So, uh, so it's it's a developer responsibility, and and they they uh, they've agreed to that comment since 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 that initial conversation. So, they they've agreed to to change that. Thank you, Grant. I appreciate that. Just ask you up here, I'll let you introduce yourself and just kind of confirm that what Grant was saying was correct. Okay, uh, I'm Billy Waits with uh, American Homes for Rent. I'm the director of land development. Um, and um, we were initially opposed to this connection um, because of the grade difference. But after looking at it today, it doesn't look as bad as I initially thought. And we, I sent Grant an email earlier this afternoon agreeing to, uh, to that and um, another, another comment I had that, that I don't have anymore. So we're in agreement with all the, all the comments on this. Thank you, sir. With that, I'll open it up to commissioners for any questions, comments that anyone may have. Just uh, Director Free. Yeah, I will just briefly mention one thing for uh, the folks that, that live out in Fountain Brook, that this has been a very long time coming to uh, for the community pool. Uh, but one of the things that we're, we're holding, and as everyone can see that lives out there, uh, the pool is is probably about 90 percent, maybe 95 percent complete. Uh, so we are nearing a completion uh, point with that. And then what we've done is is these last two sections. This is the very last section, but the the previous one and this one, uh, we've we've tied uh, the completion of the pool to the start of a lot of different things. And this last se session that we'll be approving, that once the um, once the pool is has completely uh, complete completed, then they can record the plat for this particular section. So I just kind of wanted to share that with um, maybe for folks that live out there in that neighborhood and have waited for about 20 years for the for the pool to come and it's finally finally happening. So and I do appreciate the uh, development working with us to uh, to get this resolved. Thank you. Thank you, Director Free. Um, any other questions, comments from commissioners? Seeing none, I'm going to entertain a motion to approve with all staff comments. I'll move to approve with all staff comments. Thank you, Commissioner Altazer. Second. Uh, we have a second from Commissioner Slattery. Um, Lauren, we call the roll, please. Altizer? Yes. Evans? Yes. Hasty? Yes. Longmire? Yes. Martin? Yes. Slattery? Yes. Silkwood? And Coker? Yes. That's all eight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next up, item seven on the agenda is site plan. We have one on here tonight for 216 Saunders Ferry um, with developers and representatives from the developers. We should kind of come up and just kind of be ready to answer some questions here in a moment. Please. Um, see, Timothy, you've got the lead on this one. So we kick us off, please. Uh, so this, uh, this site plan was approved by the Planning Commission um, back in December of 2021. That plan was for a 128 unit assisted living facility um, that uh, that had a pool in it. Uh, and it, uh, that plan showed the removal of an existing shed at the northwest corner of the site. Um, so in December of last year, they uh, presented a, an amendment to the plan called Amendment 1 for some uh, changes that um, were qualified for staff approval. Those, in, those uh, included eliminating the structured parking beneath the building, uh, adding interior open courtyards, consolidating a couple of detention ponds, which uh, allowed them to save some trees in the rear, uh, some changes to the building architecture, which are, actually looks better than it did before, um, and shifting the driveway access uh, northward by about 30 feet. Um, as I said, those, those changes qualify for staff level approval. They're, they're still going through staff level approval. Um, but in the meantime, they have submitted uh, a second amendment for a couple of items that uh, either don't qualify for staff approval or staff is not comfortable with approving. 
Um, the first of those is the elimination of the pool. Um, now, the, the, pool, the initial pool that they proposed, they just proposed that. That's not a requirement of the zoning ordinance that, they, that an assisted living facility have a pool. That was something, that's something they just showed. Um, but since that was approved that way, staff is not comfortable just uh, agreeing to eliminate that. So they're here to ask for, uh, ask for that. I think they do have, they have proposed some other amenities, which they've, um, they've shown in a chart as a substitute for, for that pool. And then the second item, um, they are wanting to keep that existing shed, but you can see there on the screen, um, <clears throat> the, the building, the shed encroaches into the required 20 foot landscape buffer along the north side of the property. Um, the property adjacent to theirs on the north side, all of that is Corps of Engineers property. It's just trees and part of the lake. Um, that's what it's always going to be. So they're not, they're just buffering more trees is what they're doing. Um, but that existing building does encroach, I think about, about eight feet into, into that required buffer. Um, they're wanting to, to keep that make that building and use it as a maintenance slash storage building. They're going to freshen up the appearance, you know, put, put new siding on it and make it look better. Um, so they're we're requesting a waiver of that buffer just where that building encroaches. And they have agreed to all staff comments. Thank you, Timothy. But uh, y'all introduce yourselves, please. Sure. My name is David Banta. I'm with BKV Group, and I'm the lead architect on the project. Okay. I'm Jason Miles with Lowe's Design. I'm the civil engineer on the project. Uh, Gregory Lutfi. I'm the uh, owner and developer of the project. Do y'all have anything that y'all want to add to what Timothy said before we kind of open things up for the commissioners to discuss and ask y'all questions? You don't have to. I just I no. want to give you the opportunity. Okay. Um, with that, we'll open up to commissioners for comments, questions. Commissioner Silkwood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if you could just um, talk a little bit further about the placement of the walking trail, where the covered observation deck will be, if you could kind of walk us through exactly where that will be, um, and, and also a little bit of the rationale behind having a pool and an assisted living facility from the from the beginning. I mean, I always thought that was a little odd considering it's an assisted living facility. So maybe talk through that a little bit. You want to do the first part of the pool? Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, as you know, uh, this new site plan was adapted from an old site plan uh, that we had a pool. And uh, when we went for the new site plan approval, we kept the pool, um, not knowing that it's not really conducive to a, an assisted living facility. Um, maybe in an independent living facility, but since we're just an uh, assisted living and a uh, memory care facility and an outdoor pool, uh, we wouldn't really get the use out of it uh, a couple of months a year. So we decided to uh, ask for the removal of the pool and adding a lot uh, more additional amenities uh, that are more conducive to uh, assisted living. Um, and by removing the pool, we uh, uh, created these open courtyards, a separate one for memory care and a separate one for assisted living. So that was the rationale of removing the pool. What was the second question? Um, second question was about uh, the walking trails up on the, on the uh, west side of the property. Originally, in the approved plans, that was a stormwater management area. Uh, we've since been able to reduce that in size on the west side, and we still have a larger stormwater management um, on the east side along Sanders Ferry Road. So that allowed us to keep the existing trees that would have had been removed up there, or at least some of them. Um, and so we thought nice walking trails would be up there uh, leading from the community and then the overlook. Um, is towards or in front of the existing barn or shed that's facing uh, to the, the north and looking across the water. So, yeah. Commissioner Longmire. Yes. Um, 
I'd like to ask, what are some of the additional amenities that you added when you removed the pool? Well, starting with the exterior, um, as Mr. Lefty said, and uh, Timothy alluded to as well, is that we've now taken away the parking that was below the building and was able to create two large courtyards, uh, one for the assisted living community and one for the memory care. Memory care is completely enclosed by the building, uh, but it is open to above. And both of those contain spaces um, like outdoor dining for both uh, communities. They will have activity areas, both joint or just walking areas within those courtyards. And there will also be some potential lawn games like um, bocce ball or croquet and stuff available and some water features. Uh, so that's the exterior. On the interior, uh, we have planned for um, both the assisted memory care have their own art studios. Um, both have their own dining areas, which is pretty standard. We've added a bistro into the assisted living side. Uh, we have a game room program now for the assisted living side. Um, we also have um, a big multi-purpose room that we can use for various activities. And we've also added in a whole wellness area. So we have a salon that both uh, residents base can use along with a fitness center and some physical therapy space. And most of those are really standard to most uh, assist living communities uh, more than uh, uh, even an indoor pool would not necessarily be in an assist living community. A lot of risk involved with that. So uh, you said that it's kind of standard to have this? To have those, those type of spaces which were not noted in the previously approved plans. So originally you would have built it without those amenities? Originally, they were not identified in in those plans. We didn't. We didn't. We weren't the architect on that. We we came in after that fact. I, I want to ask one other thing: is about the shed. Yes, ma'am. About how old is that? Um, I really don't know. What's the condition of it? Uh, it's structurally sound. It it uh, just it needs a facelift on the outside. Uh, really cosmetically um are you all going to do that oh absolutely go ahead what's the composition of materials that's that that shed is made out of uh, right now the exterior is uh, an asphalt shingle roof which we're going to need to replace um, the siding is what was referred to as a t111 product it's a wood product uh, we're going to repair that um, and add uh, paint to it and maybe a little bit more trim work on it. Um, the garage doors need a little bit of work. There was a couple that looked like they're damaged, so we'll replace those. Um, and there's also the front face of the garage or the, the shed has um, some split face cinder block as a facade, which is going to remain. Okay. Oh, I have. Commissioner Martin. Hey, how are you doing this evening? Thanks for uh, walking us through the application. Um, you had mentioned that the concrete uh, or the underground parking was removed. Um, what What were your new calculations? Where did those fall? Are, is what is the new project 169 units? No. Okay, the new project it, is 128. So still 128. Down. Okay. Um, how did you uh, provide for the spaces that were removed out of the parking garage? Well, the parking garage was actually, you know, with those spaces was over parked for the, the type of community. So there were still existing or proposed at grade surface parking surrounding the building as originally proposed. Um, with 128 units, that's at point two. So that's uh, per unit, that's 26 spaces. We've planned for 15 staff spaces so that's 41 and a site plan now provides 57 spaces you can have 15 staff yeah okay um the floor plans the original the original one had large uh guest rooms and it looks like we're going down to some of them are 300 square square feet 
Um, um, on average, uh, our unit s sizes were larger than what was originally proposed. Uh, if we go across the board, but yes, we do have um, the memory care studio units are about 330 square feet. Uh, assisted living, there's two or three of those in the building. Um, they're probably more closer to 400 square feet, if I remember off the top of my head. Our one bedrooms are 600 square feet, and our two bedrooms are over 700 to 800 square feet, which are larger than a lot of what was originally shown. Okay. There was a sheet of the amenities. I really liked it. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> it kind of gave a good side-by-side -side comparison, and then the old one is obviously all red. And the, yes. What you're proposing is all green. Correct. Um, but when you fill in... The rest of it, it looks kind of more balanced. And the original amenities were 29,000 square feet, and the, your new amenities are 10,752. Is that correct? Or? That's more appropriate to the size of the community. Okay. Um, if there isn't going to be uh, enough parking, are you running into problems with parking? Do you have room to provide it off? off-site or on the street or anywhere else? Well, we think if 57 provided over what we're programmed to have, we think we're, we have adequate parking on the site. Okay. And that, that's just part of me. I'm, I'm still learning. Okay, uh, no problem. Our parking is 0.2 uh, for unit right. plus one for staff, but that's the lowest anywhere. Um, I think it ranges from point. 0.3 in Nashville to 0.5 in California, all over the country. It's uh, they, they very do. low. I've worked all over the country on this, these types of communities for the last 20 some years. Yes, you do get a different size uh, or ratio that they want to calculate for assist living and memory care. But what you have to understand is that these residents do not bring a car. They're not driving. Right. So, I, I think it's more for their family. It's more for, you know, staff to have some parking and then visitors come, especially when you think about uh, the number of visitors that come at the holidays. Okay. That sounds good. I'm sensitive on the parking. We've got other parking issues, and later on I want to talk to uh, to the city about taking a second look at that, but your your project does does work. That's it for me. Thank you, Commissioner Martin. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? Commissioner Evans. Uh, I'm sure somebody's already said this, but but what borders the end of that building that that encroaches on the the buffer? What what is the next property beyond it? Who oh, this is the army. On? It's the Army Corps of Engineers. Okay, is so it is core property. It is core property. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I just have a few questions. Uh, actually, Commissioner Slatter, you, you let up first. Okay. You want me to go ahead? Okay, no. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Going back to the parking for just a second. <laughs> Sorry, I, because I also have great concern about Sunday afternoon and family visiting in 57 spots. So the 15 slots for staff, 126 units of assisted living memory care, mm -hmm. Your max staff model would be 15 at any one given time? Is That's that, what we've been told by our management company. Is that, is that I, mean, I don't know, is that a, a reasonable number of staff for a memory care or assisted living? I think, I think your parking data, data table is showing um, the, requ the requirement is um, – uh, two spaces per employee. You've got 30 employees, so 15 spaces. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, it just seems really tight to me. The point two does seem very tight, not just the holidays, but Sunday. You can drive by any assisted living, any senior living facility, and Sunday afternoons about 1 o'clock are going to be max capacity in a parking lot, and I just wonder how 57 with full staff on if there's enough room and if there's no overflow area, where, where are they parking? They're not across the street at the park. So is there any consideration for overflow anywhere? I've not been made aware of any by okay. our management company. All right, thank you. 
when y'all eliminated um, the structured parking underneath the building, how many parking spots did that eliminate? Do you remember, Jason? 40. Okay, so this is a significant number then, obviously. So I'm going to make an assumption here, and I want you all to correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, well, first, I want to ask a question. And this is specific to the architect. When did you join this project? I was brought on in uh, June of this past year. Okay. Um, the assumption I'm kind of working off of is that y'all kind of had a generic plan first, and you do kind of more specific to these sorts of projects on this. And so that's where some of these changes have kind of come from, the Correct. elimination of the pool and the parking spot on that. Um, I am usually loath to kind of go back and change stuff after we approve stuff because – especially downgrading stuff. I mean, the under, underground parking is nice, pools are nice, but I understand this may not, you know, it's not going to fit the need there, but I've always kind of liked that for convertibility on that. So I just wanted to kind of make sure background on this, that you were doing it. You know, I wanted to know the timing a little bit to see that it's just kind of specific to this project. I'm not I'm not in love with eliminating these, but I kind of understand why y'all want to on this too, because I'm thinking... 30, 50 years down the road, if this use, this building want to be converted to something else on that. And just with that question, with where you're, you have eliminated the pool, if somebody years down the road wanted to go back and put one in, is there still space where y'all have originally laid that out to do that? Would that be something that'd be practical to do? I mean, we'd have to convert something and, and lose other spaces and put the pool okay. in there. Okay, that's that's what I was getting at then right. on that. So it's not just going to be that's not going to be courtyard space then, for instance. No, we okay. wouldn't necessarily want to you know take away the courtyard, which has you know great amenities for these residents to mm -hmm. you know socialize both in you know as small groups or you know as a planned activity with the staff. Okay, All right. thank you, um, Commissioner Longer Meyer. Did you want to speak? Your mic is lit. I guess I will do, <laughs> do what my light said. Um, I kind of have a feeling when you're talking that you you don't seem to have as much pride in what this development is. It's just a feeling that I have from the way that you're projecting yourselves. And I certainly understand about the money and um, I understand that as we age, we do not need things that we, nor do we even want them or our family doesn't want us to have them. But I just feel like that you kind of want to get it through and push them aside. Um, no, ma'am, that is not the purpose at all. I mean, I've been doing these type of communities for over 20 years, and it's always about the residents in the end and doing everything that we think is best for them given, you know, what their infirmities and stuff are and how they're being cared for. But, no, we're very passionate about this now, project. <clears throat> let me ask you this. Do you get into what these units would rent for to the occupants? I don't. I'm, I'm I mean, the architect. Somebody, somebody in the organization, though, has calculated this out. Do you know what it is, what the range of cost <clears throat> for... Residency. Yeah, we've had uh, uh, two market analysis done, um, surveying the different uh, assisted living and memory care facilities in the area. I think within a five or ten mile radius, and uh, we have you know what we plan to charge is, is right on you know the mark. I mean we you know we can only get so much more from the amenities that we have and the views and everything, but you know when it comes down to it. Uh, you know, it's it's what it, it's so what. So what the market, range is it? That's my. It, it's somewhere. It's between, uh, and I'm just. Uh, I think between four and seven thousand dollars a month. Commissioner Martin. Uh, yeah, echo echoing what she said. Um, Hendersonville is a community where we take care of our parents um, and and versus other areas. Um, that's why the, the parking count is 
kind of alarming, even though it meets the code. Um, the overflow is a great question because whether, and we'll talk about the, the parking formula another day, but uh, whether the parking um, provides enough or not, if it doesn't, we're, we're in dire straits in that area. The property across the street, um, you guys own that one, right? The, no. the one that has parking spaces? No. Right up against the river? Is that not the Midway Carnival thing? No, that's M Mallard Park. That's a oh, okay. town All property. Right. All right. That's it. And, and just uh, I, I want to add, uh, you know, when over a year ago when we sought approval for the first uh, iteration of the site plan, okay, we had an architect and, I, you know, uh, we had this design was adapted from that. And then we did some more research and we brought... Uh, you know, uh, arch an architect that's more, uh, you know, has a lot of experience just designing senior living, okay? Uh, memory care, assisted living, n independent living, okay? And seeing their breadth of what they know, what works and what doesn't work, okay? What gets utilized and what doesn't, okay? And that's why we adapted this for the amenities and removing the pool and so forth. So... Um, this is more in line with what uh, what is offered in the market. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? With that, um, I want to kind of I'm going to entertain a motion, but I'm going to entertain a motion with a little deference in there. We can either take these together or we can take these separately, however anybody wants to make the motion on this, and we can have one follow-up. So with that, I'll entertain a motion. From whomever might want to make one. No. Or not. Um, approved at the staff level, or I'm going to let Director Free address that. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the parking requirements they meet the meet the parking requirements, so that would all be something that's a that's a by right. They already they already meet those requirements, uh, so that wouldn't be something uh, necessarily that that could be denied anything based on that. I think really you have you have two issues really for the planning commission. One is um, the removal of the pool in lieu of the additional amenities. And then set the second thing uh, separate from that uh, could be about the building and allowing the encroachment into the buffer. And it's really those two, those two items, all the other things, you know, they're meeting all those requirements. And those are all something that we would do at the staff, at the staff level. Thank you, Director Free. Um, so with that, go back to, we can, and it depends on who wants to make the motion, how we handle it. We can handle both of these two questions that are in our purview S together. We can handle them separately. So whichever way somebody would like to make a motion then on that. I move we consider them all at once. Second. Got a motion and a second. Um, Lauren, will you call the roll, please? Or actually, I'm sorry, I did this wrong. You want to make the motion, Commissioner Hasty. I want to kind of back up. Um, the kind of sense was you want to do these in once. So will you make a motion that kind of spells out both of them together? Then on that, I I don't see any reason. I, I don't have a problem with eliminating the pool for the use that's there. Uh, I uh, the shed, you know, if it's Rejuvenated, revised, remodeled, refixed to uh, please our staff. I'm okay with uh, with that, uh, but I would also would kind of tell the staff if they're going to be into the existing buffer. Mm -hmm. If you need a couple extra trees somewhere else, there's your shot. Go get them. Okay. Uh, 
and that uh, and I don't and and with the the shed adjoining the core property, I don't have a problem with uh, allowing the encroachment into the buffer for that small of amount. So that's kind of where I'm at, and I would make those as an you know, and if I put it in the form of a motion for those three items, but then we're going to have to come back and and vote on the whole site plan, I guess, right? Or we're going to vote on the site plan as a whole now. Well, I would make the motion that we grant these three, working with the staff, and that the site plan be approved with all other staff comments. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Allifizer? No. They had a motion on that. I think you were about to second that. Sorry. I'll second oh, it. Thank you. Um, not on my game tonight. Lauren, will you call the roll, please, before I mess things up worse? <laughs> uh, Altizer? Yes. Evans? Yes. Hasty? Yes. Longmire? No. Martin? Slattery? Yes. Silkwood? And Coker? Yes. All right. That is seven and one. It passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up on the agenda, we have item eight, a preliminary plat, but the applicant had requested deferral on that, so we will not address that this evening. Um, so we'll jump on to item nine. Um, staff level projects have been approved. I'll let Director Free get into these. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the items. Uh, the items that you can see on uh, item uh, 9 and 10 are the staff level projects that have been approved and those that are pending. Uh, I'll just note a couple of different things. The Hendersonville Dental Office, exterior remodel and site work. This is right here behind us uh, where the bank has been uh, vacant uh, for some time next to uh, the uh, Firestone tire between Firestone and Walgreens. So that's what's going on there. They're going to keep the existing building and they'll remove that can't drive through canopy and that'll be a uh, bit of, be a dental office. Uh, we're continuing to work with Free Will Baptist on an adi a large addition onto the front of uh, front of their property. Um, Tailgate Brewery, we continue we're continuing to work with them. That was here a couple of months ago, so we're working with them on their site plan on some things, but that's just the highlights of what's there, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director Free. Well, you're up for the next item on the agenda, too, for planning director comments. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just want to update everybody on the subdivision regulations. You know, we had that at a previous meeting. Uh, we're going to be bringing that back uh, for at the our next meeting in, on March the 7th. I think it's the 6th, 7th. Uh, so we'll have that, and uh, we'll have the all of the changes. You know, we had some different different things, and then uh, 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 Commissioner Hasty. Uh, was gracious enough to to give us some of his time, and uh, the staff met with him, and so we have several different revisions. Uh, we're going to be finalizing that up uh, by the end of the week, and we'll get that out as soon as we get that finalized. We'll make sure to get that to everybody, uh, but we're planning on um, uh, looking for approval of those of the final changes to the subdivision regulations uh, at the next uh, next meeting. So, th thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. I appreciate your help on that. Uh, also, we're continuing to have a lot of uh, preliminary meetings, preliminary development meetings. Um, uh, it slowed down just a little bit uh, where we had been having probably three, maybe sometimes four of those a week. That's where we meet with potential development, uh, somebody looking at a piece of property or looking for property. Uh, it's kind of slowed down just a little bit. So we're doing about two of those a week now. Uh, and so, so things continue to continue to move forward, and they're in a lot of different areas. It's not just residential, so it's commercial, industrial. There's a there's office. There's a lot of different uh, different things that are that are going on. Um, and one thing I might mention as well is because I've had a lot of people had questions is in front of Lowe's where Brewsters Brewsters now I believe is open, so the ice cream. So drive through there. That really turned out nice. Uh, Brewster's ice cream ever in front of Lowe's, but there's a bank building that's been um, uh, that's been vacant for a long time, and you'll start to see some reconstruction of that building and the site. Uh, that's a uh, medical office center 
that's going to be going there. So reuse of that of that building uh, as well. Another thing that just came to my attention uh, this morning uh, was the bank right here at the corner, Sonovus Bank. Evidently, that's not there anymore. Uh, that must have just happened recently. Uh, but we don't we're not aware of anything uh, that's going on on that property at this particular point in time. And then uh, also just one other other property to kind of note uh, within uh, on West Main Street where the MAPCO is and they've kind of scaled back all of that and the tanks. Uh, at this point, uh, the city is not aware of exactly what's going on on that site. Uh, chances are very likely that that's probably going to end up being an, a, 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 just a different kind of convenience store. Uh, gas station, but we don't have anything formal or informal really at this this point in time. But once we are aware of that, we're working with our public information officer. This has been something that's been of interest to a lot of folks in the community. Uh, we'll make sure to distribute that information out and let everybody know what's what's going on 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 that. Uh, one thing I just want to spend just a little bit of time here at the here at the end uh, and uh, about our Westlake um, uh, project that we're working on on our plan. And we have something, everybody has these, you were sent these earlier this week, but uh, we have uh, some uh, history and frequently asked questions about the Westlake um, um, future uh, revitalization plan. Uh, and so what we did is we've just had a lot of different questions and we have a lot of folks come up to our office and there's just a lot of different questions in the community about the Westlake plan. And so, <clears throat> and so what we've tried to do is kind of address some of those different things. And I really appreciate uh, the efforts of uh, Grant Green, uh, our senior planner, as well as Lauren Berry, uh, that did a lot of work on this. So really appreciate, you know, all of their efforts on there, uh, as well as uh, with Mayor Clary, and appreciate Mr. Mr. Uh, Alderman Martin was very helpful on this as well. So I really appreciate appreciate that. One thing I want to cover just really quickly uh, for, and I, I know everybody here is aware of it, but maybe for folks that might be watching uh, or listening listening to this. Kind of where we got to as far as uh, why are we doing this Westlake plan and you know what wh where is all this coming from? Uh, this goes back to the initial uh, the initial look at this is the uh, board of mayor and alderman back in 2018. They approved a document called Hendersonville Horizons. It's actually a pretty good document that kind of lays out things we need to vision for and think about for the future. And one of the one of the number one things that was identified there uh, was to come up with a plan, uh, re, a totally new uh, plan to revitalize the West Main Street and to replace the existing Old Town uh, future land use plan that we have. Uh, and so that was one of the things that was identified there in 2018. Then kind of fast forward a little bit uh, a couple years after that then uh, we started seeing some things with the old town plan and the existing zoning where there's a lot of density that uh, the uh, the boma didn't like planning commission didn't like planning staff didn't like you know how the how things were progressing where parts of the old town plan were starting to happen but they were a lot of the higher density things uh, and so we really weren't weren't getting uh, mix uh, the true mixed use development I think that was sought four years ago uh, when this vision was cast for Old Town. Uh, so it was determined that, hey, we got to do something about this, maybe change the zone and do something with the zoning. In order to do that, we need to replace the Old Town plan. So then BOMA funded uh, a couple of years ago, then BOMA funded uh, the uh, planning staff and directed the planning staff to undertake a study of that area to come up with a replacement plan. Uh, and we, as a planning staff, we, we, we took that on, uh, but due to time constraints and the complexity of it, uh, we sought out a, um, a consultant in Kimberly Horn, uh, ended up being that successful consultant. And so working with them, um, they came up and looked at all this different information, came up with, with some, uh, some different versions of plans, working with the, st uh, with us and the planning staff, we honed that down because initially there was a lot of multifamily a lot of very high density and it didn't wasn't doing what our intention was which was to reduce density so then so then we got what so then if you're familiar with uh the meeting that we had at gene brown elementary school we had kind of the early version of the draft that was the that was the draft that was kind of honed down and gotten rid of a lot of the multifamily stuff that was there uh, and then shortly after that uh, then we had a work session with um uh, with uh, the planning commission uh, and then where we are in that whole process now is we have a final draft that's very similar to 
uh, what was back at the uh, Gene Brown Elementary School hadn't really changed a whole lot. There's been a lot of comments, uh, you know, that we've taken in on uh, on the proposed proposed project, uh, but things are pretty much similar to what they were then, uh, because where we are now is at this meeting next month. So at the March meeting of the Planning Commission, we'll have a public hearing, and that'll be the first public hearing that we've had on this project. And then in the Planning Commission, this body that's up here, this, these are the group of people that are gonna make the final decision about what, what the plan is. So the plan that gets approved uh, will be something that the uh, Planning Commission approves. And, and then what the Planning Commission in their deliberation and consideration, they'll take into consideration all of the public comment, uh, uh, all the information in the plan, uh, uh, the comments that they'll receive in the public hearing uh, next month, and uh, and look at that, and then come up with a clear direction uh, to uh, to give staff on uh, on any changes to the plan or additions to the plan, or if they like the plan the way that it is, and then ultimately the planning commission will make that final decision. This, this uh, uh, the Westlake plan, because it's a future land use plan, uh, the power to approve that is held within, just within the Planning Commission. Uh, it is very, uh, the, the Planning Commission, once they take any action on uh, a plan like this, uh, then they will report that to BOMA. BOMA could choose to further approve the plan if they'd like to, or they could just take it as a, you know, as a report out from the Planning Commission. And so I just kind of wanted to share that as kind of a history of kind of where we are to this. But the, the whole initial thought of why this plan was, was done and kind of even accelerated here over the last couple of years was, was for the greater concern of really a lot of these townhomes and multifamily type developments uh, that were popping up in the very dense area uh, we kind of refer to as the dockside area uh, and, uh, and concern about that. And I just, if I can, just turn it over for a few minutes for Grant Green. Uh, if, if he could pick out just a couple of the frequently asked questions and maybe just address, address those just a little bit, uh, might, be, might be a little helpful. If Grant, if you could do that. <coughs> Thank you, Director Free. Um, we have put together that, the frequently asked questions and uh, some of the, the two, of them, well, they're all good, I think, um, but, uh, two of the, the main ones that we want to kind of talk about tonight were uh, basically, will the Westlake plan increase the number of multifamily units, um, residential units, above what is currently allowed in the, the existing zoning that the city has in place? Uh, how does this differ from the, the town center plan and the old town zoning, which is, is what was in place now? Um, and the answer to that is, is basically it's, it's one of the, the main goals of Westlake is to, to reduce the multifamily residential unit count, uh, both overall and in the Walton Ferry Peninsula. Uh, it's uh, intended to change the current zoning to preserve the remainder of the single family homes in the area south of Imperial as well. So, so basically right now, if you look at this map here, this is what we currently allow in the, the, the current zoning that's been in place for, for many years. Uh, the, the red here is the existing Old Town commercial zoning, the OTC. Uh, if you look at the legend there, it's, it just shows that uh, this includes, it's, it's a commercial ground floor, but you can do mixed use uh, residential above that. So res, it reads, it's residential above that ground floor. So um, so that's a pretty substantial area that goes all the way from uh, Sanders Ferry all the way down to uh, basically Imperial and Rockland. Uh, so, so that's a big area and then all the way down to Imperial. Um, the, the orange hatch zoning on the peninsula there is the existing Old Town residential zoning. Uh, that is, it allows for, and this is where stadium townhomes and some of the, the developments uh, shivel. Uh, some of those developments that we've had um, recently, the multifamily, uh, that's in the Old Town commercial or Old, Old Town residential zoning. And um, that, while that density has recently changed, it still allows for multifamily because it's based on this, um, the town center plan that allows for that. So what we're trying to do with this is change this with Westlake 
uh, to amend this to show the change to where that's reduced down to just the Westlake focus area. Um, uh, if there's focus areas along Gallatin Road that um, basically the red areas are just where mixed use is allowed. It has a commercial component and has the, um, basically it's a commercial focused development that it can include residential but doesn't have to. So it's a, a maximum, um, go, through and go through this, uh, basically that October meeting we wanted to make sure that we had the number, the numbers correct. And uh, because that was a question that came up and, and uh, in working with our consultant, it, it was a little bit apples and oranges. So we want to make sure that we had those numbers correct. And um, we, we focused in on that and we looked at that. And, and basically that current zoning that was on that previous screen, that allows for up to 2,714 additional residential units in the plan area. Um, and most of that is on the Walton Ferry Peninsula. So that's what can be done currently. And um, in looking at that, um, Westlake proposes to reduce that number down to 2,475 potential units. Uh, again, so it's like that's what potentially could be done with this, this plan if the zoning, if the plan were approved and the zoning were put in place. Um, and now 456 of those would be, of those 2,475, uh, would also be an extra approval by BOMA. So um, that would require that green area you see there on, um, on uh, Freehill. Uh, Free, Free Hill. Um, that area is, would be designated as a, a potential plan development, which would require an extra approval uh, over what zoning would be put in place. So, um, so overall, this is a a a net um, law, you know reduction in in num number of units that's potential, and um, basically along the peninsula there, you can see that the, the what used to be the OTR, which is by right multifamily and townhome zoning, is eliminated and. And would be a just single family neighborhood, uh, neighborhood zoning. So, so that's that's what we we want to bring that draw that down to just that that small red area by the lake that uh, extends, uh, I think down to um, almost cages there, but uh, but not quite. So, um, so that's what that entails. So that's that's basically what we're wanting to make sure that we're getting across. That um, you know these side by side maps here are, are pretty clear in what what's being reduced, and and, and the peninsula uh, is is the the main winner here in terms of pot potential for reduction of units. Um, you know, and and also uh, we want to try to use those areas and use those those focus areas as pockets for redevelopment to try to help give an extra incentive for redevelopment to try to help some of those areas um, not just be aging commercial areas but also have the potential to to gain uh, or, to, or to use that residential um, component on a commercial focused development to to have an extra incentive to redevelop so so that's 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 the main thing that we're trying to, to accomplish here with, with Westlake um, and then also, uh, I think in looking at the plan, you know, I think if I were a property owner that had, uh, uh, if I owned property on the peninsula, that I had the ability to zone, you know, develop as multifamily, um, I probably wouldn't like this plan. It's like I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, you know, want to have this adopted. But uh, I think if I were a citizen that um, that wanted to have a reduction on the peninsula of the number of units, I would want this plan adopted because it, it, it clearly is a, is a reduction in uh, potential residential units. Um, I'll quit focusing on that. I'll, I'll go on to the next question. And then uh, I think, I think this is also a good question. Um, and, and, uh, and Alderman Martin, we, we, uh, I think this has been discussed also, uh, was there a traffic study conducted? And, um, you know that's that's a great question, and it's a question that comes up 
a lot. And uh, a traffic study, you know, is generally done for uh, like a specific development, a small area. Um, and, and what that uses is it's uses the number of trips generated by a, a specific use. So if you know what the specific uses are going to be, you can determine what the, uh, based on the, the ITE manual, uh, based on how many um how many trips that you can that that will generate so on a plan like this on a large scale plan it it's a it's a large area that has um, a lot of different potential uses so it's really hard to m draw that down and say hey what what is this based on so um you know what what how many trips is going to be or are there going to be based on on this plan um we can't really tell because it all, there's so many different commercial uses that are allowed you would have to guesstimate like okay well th that's going to be a convenience store and that's going to be a, a retail center and and so so with that large scale area as well um even if you were to guesstimate something and try to put together what we would envision um it would be hard to do that because the plan area is so large. There's so many intersections that it would require. Um, it would it would probably be in excess of a million dollars just to do that study. And and um, we we do, however, on large developments, um, public works always typically requires a traffic study, uh, paid for by the developer uh, to study the effects for that specific development, and um, and and whether those extra trips are enough strain on the road or the intersection uh, is a determinant whether or not it requires that additional traffic improvement. So, so that's what we're, we're looking at there as well. So basically each of those areas as they develop may require an individual traffic study, but overall to have a traffic study for the entirety would be, would be extremely expensive and just kind of inconclusive because it wouldn't have a, we wouldn't know what's going to actually be there, so it, it would be a, just a, a big guess. And um, I think one of the other things, we just want to make sure that everybody has the, the right information. And if, if there's criticism, that's fine. You know, we, we encourage anybody to comment on the plan, and, and we want to make sure that everybody has that opportunity to, um, to, to discuss that and come to the public hearing on March 7th that we're, we're going to have on this. And... Um, you know, it, it's it's certainly something that you know it, it's gonna it's a big change, but uh, you know our intent is to make it a change for the better for the city and the citizens, and and we we definitely do not want this to be something that's gonna create more problems. You know, the like with the traffic study, it's like we're we're trying to reduce the number of residential units, so it's like a traffic study for for that would be, I mean, even if we could do that, it's 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 reducing the number of units, so. It's it's essentially better than what we have in place right now is what we're trying to to go for. So, um, uh, but yeah, we're just we're hoping that uh, just we want people to understand what the plan does and 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 not have misinformation and everything that that comes with anything like this. And and uh, if if you know what what's being voted on and what's being talked about, you know, having that knowledge is 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 you know. If you disagree with with how the how it's laid out and 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 what's what it's calling for, you know, and, and proposing, that's okay. That's totally fine, and and that's what we we encourage. We we want to hear pe from people and and uh, and know their thoughts on on the actual plan. But uh, you know, it, it, we don't want the the criticism just for the sake of criticism isn't you know usually typically constructive. So we just. If you have something that that's regarding the plan, I think that's that's going to be helpful for us to know, <coughs> and the planning commission to know what can be done to change it and and make it uh, more useful for the community. Thank you, Grant. Um, Commissioner Evans, if I could echo a lot of what Grant said, what what's happening here is the result of changing the the makeup of that whole area from what it looked like and what we were trying to encourage 20 years ago versus what we're trying to look at and encourage today and uh, most of you who are here know that that I've kind of enjoyed doing polls and finding out what people really like and don't like and 
One of the things that, uh, well, there, there are two things that are at the top of the polls and concerns every time in Andersonville. One is high density housing and two is the resulting traffic. Those are the two things that are the most important. Now, for those folks who want to participate in this public hearing on uh, March the 7th, please look at these comparisons. Look at it how it is now and look at it how it's going to be uh, if Westlake is put in. Because there were those who wanted to commercialize the entire uh, lakeside part of this plan. And frankly, I think that's part of what the bikeway is right now as a result of those thoughts way back when. Somebody else on the neighborhood network or something said, a luxury hotel? Oh my God. Well, you can build a luxury hotel there now. Uh, that hasn't changed. So what has changed is the two things that people in Hendersonville are 80 something percent concerned about, depending on which poll you look, look at, are very well addressed here. Very well addressed. What can happen there now versus what can happen there after this plan goes in does reduce the traffic. It does reduce the number of housing units that go there. And we have our naysayers. We have people who want to gripe about it before they know what's going on. But I'm talking to the folks that may be wanting to come to this meeting on the 7th. Please look at this plan. Read these questions. These are very, very good. They'll tell you what you need to know about it, and, and they're factual. And look at that, and let's have a good, honest conversation at the public hearing on the 7th and make sure we all understand that our two most important factors are taken into consideration. They are addressed, and this plan does a very good thing with what we all want. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Evans. Um, with that, I uh, want to thank Director Free for his comments, Grant for the comments as well. I um, want to th thank you all as well for the transparency and just the diligence that you brought to this process and we'll look forward to talking about it more on march 7th and with that i will entertain a motion to adjourn for now I have a second. second we have a motion in six seconds um <laughs> all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. any opposition hearing i'm sorry did i did you have a question mike i'm sorry real quick um I, I love the graphic presentation of the, you know, what's what's allowed now and what's, uh, what's going to be allowed under the Westlake plan. Um, I think that tells a lot. Uh, and I understand about the traffic issue um, and the of not having a traffic study. But I wish, I, I wish we had one that said, hey, here's a snapshot of what our traffic load and demand is right now. Um, I'm very sensitive about the traffic. <laughs> um, I think with the dockside area, I, that community has been through a lot. And by right, he, he, there's nothing we could do. I mean, we, we don't care about a pool. So we have to get it right. And so uh, I want to make sure that the, dock, the dockside gets looked at on what can be permitted so we don't have any more people saying it's by right application and I'll sue you if you don't give it to us. So. Um, I would like to see if it, if it, there are luxury hotels that are allowed now, maybe we can give that community in that area something. Maybe, can we reduce that or can we take a look at something like that that says, hey, we hear you? Okay. Yeah. I love the public hearing notice. That's a great idea. With that, I think we had a motion and a handful of seconds to adjourn. Uh, this all right. We didn't take a vote yet. You got in under skin and the teeth. Um, um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you all. We'll look.